So uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, somebody said to me at lunchtime uh, not to be offended if uh, they fell asleep uh, during my presentation, that it was uh, because of the dinner, so <coughs> you're all absolved in advance. Um, my presentation is based on Dublin City Council's uh, code of practice um, on the employment of people with disabilities uh, called Work Without Limits. Um, I'm going to I suppose, outline briefly to you the um, City Council's approach to the employment and retention of people with a disability and the steps we take to encourage people to uh, disclose the disability to us and, and the reasons for that. Um, as a local authority, the City Council uh, the City Council's business is about people. Um, we serve communities and customers and have a focus on their needs and I think it's important that we um, extend that concern and understanding to our staff also. Um, just to take you through <coughs> I suppose what we do from an employment point of view and uh, what happens afterwards, uh, we're an equal opportunities employer um, and we state that clearly on our application forms. Um, our ethos and approach and belief is that we want the best person to do the job and if they um, are appropriately qualified and they can do the job then they're the person for the job. Um, our recruitment policy is open and transparent. Um, all the uh, marks and comments are available to candidates when the, uh, on request when the um, interview process is finished. And uh, we also welcome applications from people with a disability and we state this on the um, application forms. We also ask people uh, who are applying to us if they consider that they have a disability and that's in order to accommodate them in any way uh, during the interview, whether that's uh, by providing a sign language interpreter and giving them more time or uh, holding the interview in a more accessible location. Um, in addition to that, our interviewers receive training in uh, awareness of disability and equality issues. Um, once people are, are successful and are employed by the City Council, um, all of our staff have a wide range of training opportunities available to them, um, such as management development, uh, computer <laughs> training, um, job specific training, and that's both in-house and, and uh, sourced externally if required. Um, and just on that, <clears throat> even at these courses, we um, try to accommodate people as much as we can. For instance, we have arranged for one-to-one -one, uh, tuition for people uh, with dyslexia and people with um, hearing difficulties uh, doing the ECDL computer <coughs> uh, learning program. So um, just to go on to the supports that we provide, uh, I, I, want to, I want to mention, first of all, the staff support service. Um, because it's a more general uh, service. It's not just for people with a disability. Um, it's for all of our staff, but it's a very important one. It's uh, a free and confidential um, counselling and advice service. Um, and people who, staff members, with any issues at all, whether it's personal, home issues, addiction issues, or issues that arise in work, uh, can avail of this service. And I think it's a really important one. Um, uh, next, of course, is my own role, um, the Equality and Disability Liaison Officer. Um, you got a brief outline of what I do. It, it, it's uh, dealing with bullying and anti-harassment and so on, um, diversity issues also, uh, and the whole issue of disability. And it's part of, I suppose, the, the structures we have in place to address this really important issue. I'm also a member of the Equality and Diversity Partnership Group, which is made up of uh, representatives of management and unions. And um, uh, the agenda would always include issues around equality, diversity, and disability. So it's constantly um, on the agenda and addressed. And uh, we're actually having a meeting sometime next week. And um, there are, we're looking at ways in which we can um, improve, I suppose, how we address all of these issues. Um, we have an access officer also, of course, who, whose job it is uh, to uh, ensure that city council facilities and services are available to everyone. Um, 
we have a protocol in place as well whereby when new recruits uh, come in and they are um, they tell us they have a disability, they can come to me to discuss any concerns or issues they might have so we can address those um, before they take up their post. And that's reviewed after 12 months with the person themselves and their manager. Um, the accommodations we have in place then to support people with a disability are uh, issues, t things like deaf alert system, which you, you're probably aware is a, is a bleeper to um, advise people if an evacuation uh, is in, in is necessary. Yeah. Um, the fire wardens are trained to deal with people who have mobility issues and so on. There's fire evacuation chairs and that PEEP is a, a personal emergency evacuation plan. So everybody who uh, discloses a disability to the city council has a personal uh, emergency evacuation plan in case of an emergency that they um, can be attended to. Uh, we also provide adaptive computer software um, so people with visual impairments can interact with computers and so on. And if there are ergonomic assessments required and any adaptations required to workstations, uh, they can be requested by the person themselves, by their department or section, or we will address it if it's apparent that it's required. Um, we also provide the alternative format documents on request. Uh, we provide sign language interpreters at meetings and formal occasions. And I think this is a very important um, point. For staff who acquire a disability, um, we always look at restructuring their, their job, retraining them if needs be, and uh, relocating them to a new post. And um, I, I think that gives great comfort to people that uh, if they do acquire disability, um, they can be assured that we will do everything uh, work with them to ensure they continue to have a, a fulfilled and <laughs> meaningful career in the City Council. Um, the annual census, it comes up every year. We flag it uh, in our staff newsletter. Um, we send a letter to everybody attached to their payslip. We follow that up with an email and we uh, follow that up again with another newsletter article. Um, this is an important matter because, I mean, everyone's aware that the, the, the survey is, uh, the response we get uh, can be quite low and this affects the whole issue of disclosure and planning and the influence on national policy and so on. So our newsletter articles focus on this very much. Um, we want to know, as far as we reasonably can, how many of our staff have a disability. Uh, we want to raise the awareness of that in the organisation. We want to highlight the valuable contribution they make. Um, and we want them to do it. So the, the, we point these out, the opportunities to them, the opportunity to influence national policy on the whole issue of disability and to promote the business case for employing people. I, I looked at the, um, we have a couple of hundred people with a disability or who have declared they have a disability in Dublin City Council. And I was heartened to see that they're employed across the whole range of posts in the City Council, from managerial posts to outdoor workers to professional and technical people. And uh, I think that's, you know, a, a very positive thing. And, you know, we really would like that to be reflected in the responses we get. So uh, just to mention as well, and this is an important issue for people, um, anonymity. We give assurance to people in, in these articles and so on that their anonymity will be preserved. It is a concern for people um, and we understand that and that I'm also available to provide any advice and support they might need around those matters. Uh, so just in summary, uh, the City Council is committed to equality, diversity and disability issues. Um, and that's not just a formula of words. We, we have uh, put in place a range of structures, posts um, a, a, and actions to ensure that this uh, important issue is always on our agenda. Um, we, we want to raise awareness, we want to ensure that our policies reflect the way pe people's needs and requirements, we want to treat people with respect and uh, provide reasonable accommodation and not just for our staff, we're also very aware of the needs of our customers also. And I just want to 
say, this has been a very, I suppose, positive message. Um, I'm not trying to say that we're perfect. Uh, we're a large organization made up of human beings providing services to hundreds of services to thousands of people every day. Um, our staff are spread across multiple locations. Um, so uh, we may slip up from time to time. But the important thing is that we will continue to review our policies, our procedures, keep the issue on the agenda, and try to improve the way we address this important issue. Thank you very much.